Welcome back to Rag on Fire with Knowledge Graphs, Part 2. In my last video, I showed how Rag on Fire with Knowledge Graphs can help an LLM go from this question to this answer. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the code behind the scenes, and it's going to be a little bit more informal. We're going to take a look at this Jupyter Notebook which is available on GitHub. So let's step through. First off, we're talking, there's some prerequisites, some setup that needs to happen, right? Um, I'm running this using Olama, which is a tool which lets me run the uh, LLM locally. Um, it could be set up to work with, um, with ChatGPT or any LLM that you want to um, work with, um, but that's not how this particular uh, notebook is configured. Um, I'm also using Neo4j as my uh, database. Um, this is the Docker command that I use to run Neo4j. Uh, you can also use a Neo4j Aurora instance. Uh, you would just change how you set up the environment variables here, right? Um, Finally, uh, in terms of setup, uh, you need to have some sample data to work with. In my case, I'm using data um, from the Cynthia project, uh, in particular, this particular uh, file. Um, I know it works because I've worked with this file. I, there is this um, comes with no guarantee, no warranties here. Uh, I know it works with this file. I, I haven't really tested it with a whole bunch of other files. Um, but in theory, it should work. So before I go on, I, I do want to give a, a quick shout out again to the people at Neo4j going meta, um, particularly uh, this particular session. Uh, they were a big inspiration for a lot of what you're going to see uh, in this code um, and the, the research that I've been doing. So boilerplate about some imports. Uh, then we're going to do some stuff to just set up the, the graph database um, and our connection to the graph database. Uh, this is also pretty much boilerplate. And we have some helper functions that are going to help us uh, work with the database. So uh, let's start by uh, cleaning out the uh, database. So we'll run this one. So we deleted a bunch of nodes um, and we can come over here and see that there are no nodes here. Um, if we were to rerun any of these queries, you see that everything is gone. So what are we going to do here first? Well, first, what we're going to do is uh, load um, a bundle in. So this is going to take a little while. So let me get it started while we talk about it. Okay, so that is running now. So what is this doing? Well, it's taking everything that's in our bundles repository, which includes this uh, large list of, of resources for this one patient. Um, and it's go and also some information about the locations, hospitals, um, practitioners. It's going through all of those and it's pulling each resource and it's creating a node for that resource. So um, we can go look at that code there. So what is that doing? Um, it's doing this flatten fire to string, right? Um, so first that's going through and making a flat structure out of the fire where everything is uh, connected with underscores. Um, and uh, it's also going to uh, to make a string representation of the fire, um, which I talked a little bit about in uh, a previous um, previous video uh, on rag on fire. Um, but this is a slightly more sophisticated approach to it, uh, where I'm creating a, a, a nice string representation that we'll I'll show you in in a few moments. Um, so it's going through first and doing that. Then it's also going through and it's looking for all the references within the fire resources. So whenever it finds a reference that points 
from one resource to another, it's going to create an edge. Um, so it's building up the uh, the cipher to create an edge from from the um, resource to the resource that's been being referenced. At the same time, it's pulling out dates. Uh, so it's looking anytime it sees a date, it's pulling out a date and creating a reference from the resource to that date. So what we're going to do is create all the nodes um, so we can actually come over here and see that uh, a bunch of nodes have been created. Um, right. Um, we can click on any one of these nodes and see its structure over here, right? So here's the flattened fire, flattened out. Um, all that information is in there. And we have a text representation, which is a nice little paragraph about this condition um, that kind of boils it down to, to, uh, to um, pseudo text that's sort of readable. Okay. Um, we also have, so we, we've created all those nodes. We have, we've created nodes for dates. So let's go back here and go match. So here's 25 of the dates. Um, And that. So we have each date here, right? And a date becomes associated with a bunch of other resources. Um, so here's one that's associated just with one condition. Here's one that's associated with a bunch of explanations of benefits, right? Um, which is what happens with this when all these edges got created. Okay. So now we have our graph. We can go. Take a quick look. This is obviously a bunch of, re of resources have been created, including 542 observations for just this one patient. So what are we going to do next? Well, next we want to create a embedding index, right? That um, what we want to do is basically project each node into a vector store. Uh, so we're going to run this, and this is going to take, again, a little while to run. So I'm going to do a, a, a quick edit so you don't have to watch all of it. So that took a little while to run, but welcome back. And uh, now if we come back here and we run this query and we look at the patient again, we'll see now here that um, there's now this been this field added called embedding, uh, which is a numeric representation of the text which was created. And this is true also on that a condition that we looked at uh, now there's an embedding there which is a text representation of this text okay um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to load a vector index uh, that points to that index um, i'm doing that here because i don't want to have to recreate the index every time um, and next, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which prompt we want to use. So I experimented with a couple of different prompts and ended up finding out that the, so far this prompt has done the best for me. Um, it's telling the system to limit itself to the information that uh, is, is supplied as part of the context. Um, and then it's giving it some hints about how to uh, deal with names uh, if question includes names. So we can run that. This one. And uh, next we're going to pick which model to use. Uh, Mistral is the one that I'm using here. Um, as I said, you could reconfigure this to use ChatGPT. Um, I've tried a little bit with, with um, some others, as you see here, but uh, Mistral seems to be working pretty well. Um, and then I need to choose how many uh, nodes around do I want to be able to, to fetch um, because of the large number of 
uh, of possible match nodes. Um, I've set this to a relatively large number, um, but that's another thing to, to be explored in the future. So next we're going to pick uh, which question to ask. Um, and as you can see, I've played with a couple, um, but we're just going to pick the one from the example in my last video. Uh, and then why don't we just uh, ask the LLM? Maybe it can answer it just as is. But nope, it wasn't able to answer because it doesn't have any um, access to any of the information it would need. So uh, next, let's uh, just take a look at given that question, um, what node would it find? And here's the, the text representation of the node. Um, and it did, in fact, find a colonoscopy. Great. Um, that's great. Uh, so let's uh, let's ask with that to uh, the LLM. So now what we've done is we've sent the LLM this question here, um, which had in it this information about this colonoscopy, right? But it still can't answer our question because uh, it has no idea how much it costs, right? Um, so now we can add a, a, a new element on top of that, right? Which is a Neo4j uh, allows for these um, vector indexes to have retrieval queries, okay? So in this case, we're going to add a retrieval query that's going to load all of the nodes that are connected to our node, um, which are resources. Um, so what's, let's run that. Um, so we've created the, we've, we've just created that index. Uh, and now we can take a look and see what we get back from that index. So now what we get back from that index is that original um, uh, procedure plus a whole bunch of secondary information, uh, one of which is the claim, right? And the claim does contain an amount on it. So now we can go and we can ask the LLM with all of that information as part of the prompt, Right, so our prompt now includes the procedure and all the information, including the claim. And we can get back that this is the total. And of course, being an LLM, sometimes it formats it nicely. Sometimes it doesn't format it nicely. Okay. Now, in this case, we were lucky enough that the um, that the vector index did return the right date for us. But what if it hadn't? Um, can we, is there a way that we can be sure that we're getting the right date for, um, for our question, right? And now we could go into the question and we could, uh, you know, do some regular expressions that would extract the date uh, and hopefully give us uh, the, the right thing. But depending on how the date was phrased, that could be, that could be difficult to do, right? So what if we go and we ask um, the LLM actually what date is in the question, right? So here I'm going to ask the LLM, I'm going to give it the question um, to ask down here, right? Um, but what I'm going to ask it to do is not to um, answer the question, but to extract the date from it. Um, so if we run that, we get back uh, this date string, right? So I've asked it to return the date as in a JSON format, and then I parse that I'm able to parse that JSON format and get back exactly what I want in terms of a date, right? So what are we going to do with that? Well, if we go back to our graph for a second, let's um, go here and rerun our colonoscopies and take a look at those nodes, right? So we find the node that was on 2014, we're going to see. So here we have a date, right? Um, I can take this guy and move him for now. Um, here we have that date node, right? Which has <clears throat> the date in it as a string. Um, and what we can do is 
again, use the um, retrieval query, but this time we'll limit the retrieval query based on the date that we found in the question. All right. So we'll go ahead and create that. And um, then we can see that in fact, it returns, it returns the right thing. Now, obviously it was returning the right thing up there, but um, uh, in other cases, I have seen it not return the right thing up there. Um, but in any case, here we have it returning the right thing. And then we can run that, sending all of that to the LLM using the node that's on the right date. And we should get back a similar answer. Yep. Okay. Um, finally, in this uh, in this notebook, I brought it all together into one function um, that just does everything that I that that it does above, um, and I was able to run it on some other things. Um, let's see if how these do. So. So the name of our patient is Alfonso758. And yes, that is in fact the name of this patient. Um, if we go down to name, his given name is Alfonso758. Um, see any of the, and um, we can do this one. So this is asking for um, eight for um, a date, but it's it's formatted the date in a slightly different way, right? Um, but it still comes back with the right node. So we'll get probably a fairly similar answer out of that one. And yep, there we get a similar answer with it actually nicely formatted this time. So thank you. I hope you uh, found this interesting. Um, if you did, I'd appreciate a like. Uh, the link to the um, code will be available in the description below. And uh, leave me a comment letting me know what you think I should uh, tackle next. Thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.